Recently, we've talked about my experiences in environmental education and developed a working definition for what environmental ed can be. I have lots of ideas about how we can improve environmental ed, but first, we need to know how it's currently taught. Where does environmental ed happen? Since it's educational, your first thought might be schools, and there are definitely lots of examples of schools incorporating it into what they teach. A survey of environmental ed implementation in Iran revealed that this is often easier said than done. Many schools and teachers seem to find it easy to share facts about the environment with students, which is great. Solid information is the first step, after all. Unfortunately, most found it much more difficult to incorporate the parts of the curriculum that focus on connecting environmental issues to students' lives and motivating students students to action. I don't know about you, but to me it sounds like most schools skipped the important parts. Without engaging students on the level of their values, how can we expect them to learn to care about the environment? Without providing students with ways to act, how can we expect them to become environmental advocates? I know many teachers and schools are worried about getting political, but as a student I also know that learning how to be an advocate shouldn't be left out of what we're taught. In South Africa, the public school's approach to environmental ed was to try to add it to their geography lessons, which sounds logical. While a training program was implemented for teachers to learn how to add environmental ed to their geography lessons, the final product was still left up to each individual teacher. Unfortunately, most teachers in the study seem to still rely on their textbooks to direct the class, rather than using learner-focused teaching techniques to engage their students. Boring! A survey of educators in Idaho schools found that an environmental ed program of any kind is absent in many of them. Of those that do have some sort of program, many of the teachers admitted that their programs are not as strong or effective as they could be. I'm of the opinion that environmental ed works best when the learner has at least some interaction with the natural world they're studying. Think about how much I said I love stream study. But the average number of field trips for the surveyed schools was just under seven, with students going outside an average of 14 times per year. I can't say that I think sitting inside a classroom is the most effective way to teach environmental ed. My favorite classrooms are those without walls. Okay, so if public schools struggle for consistency in environmental education among teachers, then maybe it's best if it happens in unstructured informal settings? Perhaps. I was lucky enough to grow up in a family that valued nature, so every weekend turned into an environmental learning opportunity. But researchers in California studying family engagement with environmental ed found that many families report that their science learning experiences have reinforced the views that science is complicated and out of their reach. If the adults in a family don't feel comfortable in nature, how can we expect them to guide their children's learning experiences? The California researchers created cards with prompts on them to help facilitate a family day at the beach including discussion about sand, waves, and rocks. However, the three families use the cards very differently. While an unstructured, family-guided approach may work for some people, without the proper tools, learners will receive different experiences based on the comfort of their adult teachers. Can you tell where this is heading? My favorite kind of environmental education, it turns out, is a compromise between the two approaches I've covered so far. While a classroom teacher may not feel comfortable adding environmental ed into their normal curriculum, trained educators can supplement what's missing. When I worked at nature centers, we often hosted school groups and scout troops on field trips. I loved taking the kids on discovery hikes in the woods and doing animal programs for wide-eyed circles of students and chaperones. In Turkey, a series of pre- and post-tests given to elementary students who participated in a 12-day program at a nature center demonstrated a significant increase in the students' feelings of responsibility for the environment and their corresponding behaviors after the program. While in college, I worked as a counselor for a program called Outdoor School. Every week we would take students from a local elementary school on hikes, do animal programs, have campfires, and provide their entire year's worth of environmental ed curriculum. I loved doing it because I could tell that we were making a difference for our students. In a similar situation in New Jersey, kids were asked to reflect on their experiences once they were back in the classroom. Most students mentioned social experiences and scientific knowledge gained as their most memorable things from camp. 
camp. That's very exciting because it sounds like a lot of the things they learned may have stuck with them for a while. However, just like the other approaches to environmental ed, the school nature center partnership still isn't perfect. Many of the students said that the thing they found most confusing about their camp experience was also the scientific information. For instance, one student said, the most confusing part of the trip was some of the terms the teachers used in the sessions. I don't think this problem is peculiar to environmental ed, though. Many teachers rush into using technical terms without introducing them first and providing context for learners, but it's something we need to work on to keep our learners engaged. Another student said, I think bear ecology was confusing because I don't know why we need to know about bears. This goes back to what I've been hinting at all along. Environmental education is about scientific facts, yes, but the more important part is helping learners to establish an emotional connection to nature. Why do we need to know about bears or trees or lightning bugs? Every parent or teacher who wants to work on environmental ed needs to think about these questions. They're the important questions, the ones that can engage learners in a way that will transform them into nature's ambassadors. So what do you think is the best way to teach environmental education? In the comments, list some places where you've experienced environmental education in action. Links and citations for all of the research sources I used will be down in the description. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it. If you didn't like this video, please share it with someone who would. And if you'd like to support The Roving Naturalist, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'll see you next time.